Hello folks, today we'll be looking at some of the things we can do with SQL injection uh, in addition to just getting to the database. Now one thing I've been shocked by is how many places are still, even in this day and age, vulnerable to SQL injection. What's happened with some places is they've somewhat locked down the database and the data in the database, but by not realizing how SQL injection affects more than just the data in the database, uh, they forget about things such as getting to the actual OS. Now, you know, if you think about it, the truth is, is if we own the OS that the database is sitting on, don't we really own the database as well? So we're going to look at that and explain it. Now, I've been able to get pretty high level access to some very, quote, secure servers using these techniques. So we'll show you in this short video how to get the OS by simply using XP command shell, which basically allows SQL to call the Windows command line. Now just hanging out on some SQL programming sites and support forums, I, I've been able to uh, see a lot of admins still today asking, hey, how do I get XP command shell back to send these commands to the Windows command line and blah, blah, blah. And what's crazier is so many people come on in there telling them how to do it. Now in this video, we're going to assume that you already have seen some SQL demonstrations on SQL injection, how it works against the database, so we're not going to really be covering that. Uh, maybe we'll do a more novice level video to cover those basics. So um, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at uh, what we'll actually be doing here. Alright, so to begin with, uh, you know, we've got a simple database here. You know, and this basic construct with it is you got the right username and password, you get access to the account, uh, just like you see there. Now, on the other hand, what we're going to be focused more on is actually, uh, you know, using, again, basic SQL injection techniques to get a little more out of it other than just getting at the OS, or excuse me, other than just getting at the database. Now, I've typed up these basic SQL commands here, or SQL injection commands here, to kind of illustrate a little more, um, you know, what we're going to be doing. So. I'm pasting this in the in the login form here and basically what I'm going to be doing is simply uh, creating a user account named Keetron Evans. Simple as that. Now with this creation of this account, um, you're going to see that we get access to it and that's no biggie because again with SQL injection getting, um, you know, that access denied is a sign that it took our query or our string and actually sent it to the SQL database. So that's a good thing. Now next what I'm going to be doing is using the same command or almost the same command. I'm just going to change it from net user to net local group. All right. And basically what I'll be doing with that, let's go ahead and change that, is I'm going to basically say, hey, we've created this account, Keetron Evans, now let's add him to the administrators group, the local administrators group. And this again, guys, this is this is really not per se hacking. I mean, this is just knowing the Windows command line and knowing just a little bit about SQL injection. So um, we go ahead and submit that. And again, access denied is a good thing. And I'll show you a little bit later what happens when you get your... your uh, you know, commands wrong. You get a different error message. You don't get a SQL or that access denied. You get other types of messages. So next here, I'm just going to simply TFTP PWDump, which is just a, uh, a utility that does DLL injection into the LSAS process and uh, allows you to dump password hashes from the SAM file. So again, we got our access denied, which, you know, we can assume everything's all good. Now later, you know, we'll go back and check these accounts that we created, or that account we created. And then I'm just getting samdump.dll because we need that as well. Uh, it works as part of uh, pwdump. Now basically here we got the two files we need to run pwdump. And you know, again, if you don't know what pwdump is or how to run it, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, when we actually run it. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to now issue a command to the command line to run pwdump. And I want to dump the contents of that out to inetpub www root, and we're going to name it sqldump.txt. 
Now keep in mind here, um, we know this is a web server because we did get recon. Uh, we, we know it's an IIS web server, so we're, we are assuming INET pub www root is, the, is where it is. And actually, you know what, let's, let's, since we're attacking the OS, let's do something a little more devious here. Let's just use the echo command and write a text file out there. Because I'm going to, you know, kind of introduce you to alternate data streams a little bit. So we're going to echo, write this text file out. The contents, or what you see in quotes there, is going to be do not delete. That's going to be the contents of it. And uh, we're going to still write it to www.root, or inet pub www.root. And we're going to simply name it temp.txt. So let's do that. All right, and we submit that. Now here, we got an error. We didn't get our access denied, and here's why. I boo-booed my uh, syntax here. And, you know, we can go back and check it again, but that's pretty much what happened. See, we still get the error. So what we need to do here is I forgot to put two quotes here to, uh, you know, not escape out of the command or break the command string. So if I put my two quotes, there we go. We got our access denied, so we should be all good. All right, so theoretically, we just wrote this file out, um, you know, on this machine. And now uh, what we're going to do is we'll use pwdump, and we're going to hide the contents of our dump in this text file using alternate data streams. Now, here's the thing. We just did that. Now what we need to do is browse that web server because remember we could be remote here because this is a web front end. So we're going to browse to the root of that web server and look for that file temp.txt that we theoretically uh, just created there. And we can see that it's there. Let's get the root name right here. There we go. We see it's there. All right, so now let's pause for a second on this. And let's go and check to see if our first injections work. Well, we created a username Keytron Evans. There he is. And then he should also be an administrator, and there he is. He's an admin. So we know our first injection works. So now we know that we got our syntax and stuff right. We can continue on. So let's go ahead here and... Um, look at this file that we created, this temp.txt uh, ads.txt, which is our alternate data stream. We're going to get an error here, and I want you need to see this so that you can know how alternate data streams works. So we don't, it, it looks like the file's not there, but remember that's the whole point of alternate data streams. You can't get to it and read the file easily because it's not stored in a data fork, it's stored in an attribute fork. So, um, that's why we can't read it directly like that. So what we got to do is we basically have to, uh, you know, trick Windows into doing something special for us. Now again, you can see as we type this here, our original holder, original file that we are going to hide or that we hid the dump in is actually there. So it's there, but where is that other one? So let's do a little trickery here. What we got to do is we got to trick the Windows command line. So again, all we're doing is command line stuff here. And I would even say basic. So we're now going to use a more command. And I'm just going to, at the beginning of it, put the the pipe symbol, or excuse me, the uh, is less than symbol, which basically says read this file. All right. And you got to get the path just right. And then at the end here, I'm going to say write whatever you read in this file out to another file. And uh, we want that file to be on inetpub dubdub through it as well, so we can read it. And openit.txt is a perfect name for it. All right, so uh, that's what we did. Here's the, the basic structure here, writing it out. So, And then here's what the file is going to be named. So let's go ahead and submit that. And again, we get our access denied, which uh, should mean that the injection actually worked. So let's try to read it. Open.txt. See here. 
nope that didn't work and you know why it didn't uh, first of all just want to point out something here we could also have used a type command to do this with more as well but our issue in this case is what we did is we didn't try to open the right file because remember we named the file open it dot text not open dot text so if we put the right name in here there we go we got our hashes so now I'm simply going to copy those so I'll right click and copy and uh, you know what I'll be doing with what I just copied is I'll paste it into a new text file on my host machine so now we're off the SQL front end we're back on our host machine I'm firing up cane enable here Let's get our windowing good so we can see things we need to see alright now I'm simply gonna uh, create a new text file and paste the contents of what we copied from the dump this is the hashes gonna save it at, to the desktop and I'll name it open it dot text stay consistent with what we named it before and now I'm simply going to go into cane and I need to do uh, LM and let me get rid of the stuff that we had before that I cracked earlier alright go to landman go to add and then I'm just gonna add that text file alright open it dot txt from my desktop there it is we're gonna go after the account Keytron Evans uh, just a proof of concept here uh, again this is not necessarily a password cracking demo so uh, we're not gonna get too crazy with that we could do brute force where we could specify these parameters but we could also do dictionary and I'm gonna do dictionary because I'm pretty confident that that passwords in my dark one dictionary file here so we start it and the reason I know it's in there is because I created it and I created the, the dictionary or I copied the dictionary and added some things so we see our crack running here and uh, there it is we got that password now if since Keytron is a pa administrator we could now actually use that password to log into other systems so thanks for watching guys